Hello, everybody. This is CJ Cousins with Living For Him, Pastor CJ Cousins, uh, Associate Pastor of Youth and Younger Generations at Vienna SDA Church. About this past Saturday afternoon, this past Saturday, this past Sabbath, um, wow. So there's a whole lot to say here in a, in a short little while. Um, I really wanted to get on here a lot sooner. I wanted to get on here really um, probably Saturday night or Sunday yesterday. Um, thank you. Thank you to everybody that came out to support um, my ordination service into the gospel ministry, pastoral ministry within our uh, church. Um, I was just overwhelmed by the amount of love, by the amount of support um, coming from uh, people from all over the world, uh, all over the country, um, coming in person from the surrounding area here in the DMV, Northern Virginia, um, people online here on Facebook, people from all over the place. Guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, Many of you that I know um, along my life and my journey with Christ and my journey as a pastor, um, you have poured into me in so many ways and a little bit of God's love and his, and, 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 and his goodness has been revealed to me through you. And I just wanna thank you so much. Um, it was really um, an overwhelming day, um, an emotional day in, in many respects. It really kind of started in the morning uh, I came to preach uh, Sabbath morning, a message that I was just really excited to preach about, the Christmas story in Revelation chapter 12, crushed by a baby. And man, I got there like, God, I'm ready to preach your word. Just just do with me what you, what you want to do. Have your way. I get there. And when I get there, I was expecting, because uh, we were doing the baby dedication of my little baby girl, Eden, DJ and I were just so blessed. Uh, to have her uh, dedicated to the Lord. And we knew that both the, it was a busy day, so we knew that both the dedication, baby dedication was gonna be that Sabbath. We knew that uh, I was gonna be preaching. And then we also knew there was gonna be the ordination service in the afternoon at 3.30. And then we also knew that there was going to be a concert, Christmas concert in the evening. So we knew it was gonna be a very long day. But the people I knew that were gonna be there from out of town, my mom, my stepfather, um, I knew that my brother was going to be in town and my father-in-law was going to be in town. And so I was prepared for that. But nothing prepared me for when I walked in, greeted the congregation, and at the same time saw my biological father sitting in the congregation. I was done. It was a wrap. Because my father, wonderful man, uh, it's a long story. When, when the book comes out uh, very soon, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that. But uh, the presence of my father being there. Man, I went up there to preach and I actually brought two pieces of Kleenex because I knew any moment. And, 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 and while I was preaching, we're going to be sharing the uh, video maybe today or tomorrow. We're going to be putting out the video right here. And um, you're going to see that as I'm preaching, I tend to focus now, if you're looking at me as I'm preaching um, on your screen, you're gonna notice that I focus a lot, your left, my right, from my perspective when I'm preaching, you're gonna notice I'm kind of focusing more on my right, your left, as I'm preaching. Because my family, which well, by the way, it wasn't just my father, my father was there in addition to those I just mentioned, my aunt, which is his sister, was there, my other aunt, which is my mother's sister, was there, her children, which are my cousins, all from New York, were there. I was just like, I was so blessed to see them. And though, guys, thank you so much. My family, thank you for coming out. My father, thank you so much for being there. I mean, that totally set the rest of the day for me. I mean, I was, nothing else could have happened. But the fact that they were there, particularly my father, man, um, I was blessed. And I tended not to look over to that side where my father was sitting, where my other, where the rest of my family was sitting, because I knew if I did, I would have to pull out that Kleenex and uh, kind of stop the, the, the waterworks from coming down. 
Speaking about preaching, I wanted to also share something really quick with you that I hope will also encourage you. It has to do with preaching, but it has more, it's more than preaching, but I'm, I'm going to share with you something about when I preach. Um, first of all, I love preaching. I love talking about Jesus. Um, I love him he, because he first loved me. Um, and I see everything in Scripture through, as revealed through the love of God revealed in Christ. So for me, it is coming straight up from my, my heart, from my experience. And uh, he's been working with me in my, in my preaching, right? But watch this. I spend a lot of time pouring over my message. I pray over it. I ask God to reveal to me what he wants to say to the people, not just locally, but abroad, whenever uh, they watch the messages that um, are preached. And I, I seek him for what he wants to say through his word because it's by what he spoke that he still speaks a relevant word for today. So there's the sermon, and I always tell people this, it's the sermon that I, the sermon that I write, right? There's the sermon that I write. And then there's the sermon that I actually preach. And those are not always the same thing. And let me explain what I mean. I will prayerfully seek the Lord and write a message and then I'll get up to speak. And when I get up to speak, I'm um, getting a call, one moment. Uh, hey, sweetie, can I, can I call you right back? I'm actually on a live video right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you're on the video. <laughs> I'll call bye, you right back. Bye. All right, bye. bye. <laughs> My beautiful, wonderful wife, Deidre, on her way back from dropping off her father-in-law from the airport. So there's the actual sermon that I preach. When I get up to preach, right? The actual sermon that I preach largely has the content by which I prepared when I was writing the sermon. By the way, um, when I preach, I don't preach with notes or a manuscript. I may have maybe a little outline in there um, in my Bible, just jog my memory about some of the things, points I wanted to make or a quote I wanted to quote. But what's interesting is, is that um, I write everything out in my sermon as I'm preparing it, but I don't bring everything I wrote with me when I go up there to preach, because I really want to, um, in terms of my delivery, I want to be able to keep my eye on the congregation, really um, relate. I like to be close to the people when I'm speaking. This is just kind of, this is just me. And I also take my messages and I also break them up and they become devotional blog posts, which many of you see that are following this ministry and, and a lot of what we share. So when I actually get up to preach, I, some, you know, early on in my ministry, I'll try to want to like communicate everything that I wrote down. And over time, I began to realize that it doesn't work that way. And here's, what I, here's the point I want to make. I get up to preach, and when I preach, I may preach about 80% of what I wrote. Sometimes only 70% maybe of what I wrote, or 75%, um, maybe 90. But many times when I'm preaching, the Lord is literally giving me revelation, insight, things to communicate to the congregation on the spot. In, relative to what the text is about, relative to what I prepared, but something fresh in that moment that he literally drops on me to speak to the community, to the, to the congregation, or sometimes even to me, um, that helps me even as I'm delivering the message. And so I, I say there's actually three sermons. I'm gonna explain what the third sermon is in this preaching event. There's the, the sermon that I prepare, there's the sermon that I actually preach, then there's the sermon that the people actually hear. And it's not always the one I wrote, or the one I'm speaking. Not that it doesn't have the same core content, but often they will, as they're hearing me preach, and I'm receiving stuff sometimes even as I'm, often as I'm preaching, but then what happens is they will actually tell me when I see them after the message, they'll come to me at the door or in the hallway or at, at lunch when we eat, and they'll share with me things that the Lord gave them through the message that was specific to their lives that I had no idea about. And somehow as I'm preaching what I'm, the word that's going forth that the Lord has given me is being spoken to them through the Holy Spirit to address their specific needs. And so I always say that there's actually three sermons um, that are actually preached as I uh, prepare for the preaching event. Here's what I wanna say to you about that. It's funny how what I'm gonna share with you, which is a part of a thank you here, but. It's amazing how there's also a message in this. God is sovereign over the preaching. He's sovereign over the message. 
when God puts you in a position, and you don't have to be a preacher like myself, a pastor uh, with a pulpit. Uh, we all have platforms. We all have ways in which to communicate with people in our daily lives, just every day, right? When Jesus told the disciples, don't think too much about what to speak, because I'm going to give you in that moment what to speak. Um, literally, that's how it works. Now, it doesn't remove the importance of studying his word because anything that is communicated on behalf of Jesus, on behalf of God, has to be based on in harmony with his written inspired word, the word of God, the scriptures. But what he gives you in that moment to say based on the scriptures, often he, through the spirit, takes full control and even tweaks what you may have wanted to say or what was in your heart to say. He tweaks it and he takes control of it. What that does, it has liberated me. I used to be like, man, I, I wanted to say this and I didn't get to say it, so let me put it in the blog. Maybe people will get more of what I'm trying to say in the blog. And that's sometimes why I put the blogs out because I want people to get a little bit more of what I wanted to say that I didn't get to say, but it's in the blog because I wrote it when I was preparing the message. I just wanna share with you, God is sovereign over every aspect of your life, especially your communication of the gospel. Just wanna let you guys know that. That, that happened this past Sabbath, a lot of what was said was literally given to me in the moment. Last thing I wanna to say to you as I'm just, again, so grateful, thanking you so much for all of the love and support that that, uh, that was poured out online, but especially those that came um, in person um, to be a part of that event. Here's what I wanna say. I wanna thank every conference official. I'm a part of the Potomac Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and I love my conference. I love their mission of the gospel and uh, um, building uh, healthy disciple-making churches. Um, our ministry here at Living For Him is around those core themes. It's such in harmony with the conference that I'm a part of, and that's totally the Holy Spirit that put that together. So I want to thank all of the conference officials that were present, you know, those that were there, that were pastors, that came to support, um, even those that couldn't be there in person but sent um, messages uh, online or to me electronically saying that they're there with me in spirit or they're watching online. Um, I want to thank all of you. Um, I love you all from the bottom of my heart. But I also want to say that I'm honored to be um, in this formal way, because the Lord has already ordained those that have received the gospel of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, gifting you with uh, gifts for the work of ministry. You don't have to be a pastor to be ordained to serve Jesus Christ. We are all, if we're followers of Jesus, priesthood of all believers, equal. We are all ordained by the Spirit. But the church gets together and wants to, in a formal way, affirm the gifting of the Spirit that the Spirit has already given you for the work of ministry. And that is what took place this past Sabbath, uh, Saturday afternoon. Um, I, I wanna say that I'm blessed, I'm honored to receive this formal affirmation through um, uh, ordination to the gospel ministry as a pastor, full-time pastor. Um, but I also wanna say that I'm honored uh, to be a part of a conference that does not just uh, ordain in this formal ecclesiastical setting, church setting, uh, uh, men like myself, um, but, but I also receive it very uh, soberly um, and humbly while honored and blessed, recognizing that many of my sisters in pastoral ministry um, are not as privileged to receive the exact same recognition for what the Holy Spirit has already gifted and calling called them to do. I just want to say this, I'm glad, and I, I, I had some reservations even when receiving this, um, but I'm glad to be a part of a conference that does the same thing that they did for me to pastors of the opposite sex. And I'm glad to be a part of a conference that does that because I don't know if I was a part of one that did not do that equally for all those that are called to the pastoral ministry. I don't know if I would have received what I had received this past Sabbath evening or if I would have uh, requested what in our uh, uh, denomination or movement uh, practice as commissioned until we provide an equal form of recognizing those that have been gifted by the Holy Spirit. I just want to say I'm grateful. I'm a part of a conference where I share a credential that those that are my sisters in pastoral ministry also receive equally as myself. I'm honored to be
be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you. I love all of you. God bless you. Continue to seek the Lord Jesus Christ in your everyday life. Continue to follow him. Uh, my testimony is what this um, ministry, uh, its name, Living for Him, comes out of a text in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. But that also comes out of a personal story and testimony that uh, came out of my personal experience, my wife and I, and thus the birth of this name of this ministry, Living for Him. I pray that my testimony, as you very soon will hear um, uh, or receive um, the book of my story, I pray that you also will live your life for Him, that you will receive Jesus, you'll follow Him, and multiply disciples for the kingdom. God bless you and continue to live for Him. Peace.